So my career journey to get to where I am today has involved quite a few twists and turns and uh, unexpected changes actually. I, when I was at school I, I, it wasn't clear that I was going to be a scientist or a chemist. Um, I enjoyed science and um, was, was, was good at it in school but my aspiration then was to actually be a professional footballer and um, it, it was because that didn't work out that I I pursued a scientific career and I came to Cambridge to study natural sciences and after my undergraduate degree it wasn't immediately obvious that I was going to do a PhD in fact I, I, I thought I'd messed up my finals exams and a PhD wouldn't even be an option as it happens I was wrong about that and I, I started a PhD which I did with with my mentor professor Chris Abel and this was on the study of enzyme chemistry so it was really the first time that I was thinking about chemistry in a life sciences context and, and that excited me very much started uh, my thinking on, on the biology of life orientated molecules and processes after my PhD I went to the USA uh, where I spent two years with Professor Steve Benkovic at Pennsylvania State University and this was a lab that was a, a pioneering lab um, in, at the interface of chemistry and biology and really one of the first labs in the world to, to, to seriously address that interface and I had a very exciting two years there which left me uh, with no doubt that I wanted to pursue this as a long-term career and at that stage I, um, I had the opportunity to come back to Cambridge to the chemistry department start my own laboratory and I must say early on I tried many different things I was working on lots of um, smaller problems before um, settling on DNA which has been my long-term um, direction since then and, and still is I consider all those who have been my teachers right from school to be mentors um, going right back to primary school days because collectively they, they have and still do shape the way I think and think about science. There have been a number of tough challenges in my career and they, and they will continue to be. The, the, the earliest was really at the very beginning of my independent academic career uh, when faced with building a laboratory, building a team and setting in motion some of my own research ideas and so the, the first five years were, were, were very hard work with no guarantees and certainties and um, I, I wasn't entirely clear about what I was trying to achieve and that was a tough time but an important part of learning to be a PI. Now at what point in my career did I feel I'd made it? Well I, I'm not sure I'm yet ready to say I've made it or whether there is indeed a single point in one's career when you feel that. Um, I, I think from a scientific point of view it has been very gratifying to see an invention that I played a role in creating now working in the hands of other researchers and in particular playing an important role with, with clinical researchers and, and patients. That, that is very gratifying. Um, I, I think in the other areas that I've worked um, it has been important and gratifying to perhaps um, address goals which many of my peers and colleagues felt were challenging or impossible and I think it's important to challenge dogma and um, if and when you succeed in publishing a paper that provides the evidence um, that, that's a very important um, moment in one's career. My advice for young researchers who want to build their independent research career is to be aware of what else is going on in their field of interest but do something that's different to those who work in it. Try to think differently about the problem and have an original approach. Choose your colleagues very carefully that you recruit into your group and then invest your time very heavily in your co-workers. Spend as much time as you can with them, 
um, stimulating each other about ideas and mentoring them and building a good working relationship. The third thing I would say is, is to be ambitious. Think about a research problem that you're prepared to spend at least 10 years thinking about and working on. My, my future ambitions are to continue um, to have new ideas and invent new methods to pursue these questions. And I, I very much hope to uh, continue doing that for some time to come.